Hey, welcome back. This is Shralp RC and we're gonna do something today. So I have two rival MT-10s by Team Associated. They're awesome little trucks, but they have had some problems with the drive shafts breaking. I got two of these trucks about a year ago and I've gone through 12 or 13 drive shafts, maybe a little more, mostly on the rear and sometimes on the front. I have one truck with a Max 10 SCT system with a 3200 kV motor, and then another truck has the new 10BL120, and that one very rarely breaks them, but the Max 10 breaks rear drive shafts all the time. So, I've been trying to figure out a solution and I might have some here. These are the Traxxas Rustler Extreme Heavy Duty. And then this is the Techno Slash Kit that will give it CVD type drive shafts. So much higher quality. These are pretty cheap. Two of these are about the same as a replacement set of stock drive shafts. So this is a nice budget option. And then for the full on extreme option, we got this. So what I'm gonna do is on the MT-10 that has the 10BL120 system, I'm gonna put the Traxxas on the rear. And then on the Max-10 truck, I'm gonna put the Technos on the rear. And I'm also gonna try the Traxxas on the Max-10, of course, so that we can get the full range. <laughs> We're gonna beat the hell out of them down at the dirt pile, which is where not too long ago I went through four of these in literally 15 minutes of driving. So this is a team associated stock one. And they usually break on the inboard piece. This little thing will break right here and then rarely they'll break on the outside. You can actually reuse some of these pieces. I have a couple of videos about that. Anyways, so first of all, let's just see how these compare. End to end length is actually just about the same. The spacing on the inner cup is just right, except for you need to drill out these little tabs and then that side is fine. And then on the other side, there is a bit of an issue. If we compare the distance between the pin at the bottom, the pin hole at the top where the wheel nut attaches. It's a little bit f longer on the stock one. So what we have to do is put the stock one in here and that's pretty easy. So to get the, the first pin out is very easy. We just slide that pin out and then this pulls out. And this is square so it keys in and locks in in here. Here's what the team associated one looks like. So see how these pins aren't quite lined up? Hopefully you can see that in the camera. We can take this, the regular team associated one, put that in here and it'll line up just right with the hole. But first we're gonna have to drill this out. So both sides need to be drilled out. That's the basic end of that long story short. I'm gonna be using a quarter inch drill bit. You could Dremel this too, but the drill seems to work okay. And then for the inboard side, I'm using 3 16 So all you need to do is just drill those little tabs out. I'll show you how that looks, and then we'll put them in the truck, and then we'll do the tech nose. So the easiest way I found to get these out is needle nose pliers, some pretty skinny ones, so you can get the point underneath, and then Squeeze them to get it, oops, off. Let's get it in there. Come on now. There, then we can slide that out. The outboard side next to the wheel needs the quarter inch drill bit. You don't want to squeeze this thing too hard because you'll squish it and put dents in it, but you need to hold it, keep it from moving. Make sure you go very vertically. And that's it. All right, now that that's drilled out, we can take the OEM one and see how that just slides right in there. Line the pins up, put that pin through. There we go. Now, <clears throat> now it will fit. Now we can put this back on here. And this is a little easier to get it on. You just take one side, get it wedged in there and then just pop it over and they're nice and flexible. So that's one side done. 
Now the inside, that needs the smaller drill bit. So you want to be even more careful not to squish it too hard. There we go. And you can drill right through. You don't need to worry about not drilling all the way through. You actually kind of need to drill all the way through. Snap it back in there. That's good to go. To replace these is super simple. First take the wheel off. Take this off here. Little pin. Slide that. That goes down. And then little baby screwdriver. There's a little threaded pin. If you get this at just the right angle, you can get your... Oh, that got damaged. That screw... Oh no, the screw is all banged up. So, this little threaded pin screw right here is just destroyed. Luckily there's just enough sticking out to get a pair of pliers on and it doesn't have any tension obviously really so thank goodness for that. Awkward to do it at that angle though. So Make sure you tighten those enough that you don't have any metal sticking out otherwise that might happen. Yeah look at that. I don't know if you can see that at all but it looks destroyed. Throw that away. Okay, so then once you've got that dealt with, then you can just pull this off of there. Pull this out of there. We'll take our nice fresh one here. Might be a little snug. Just line up the pinhole and push it on. There we go. It just takes a little bit of wiggling around, but you can tighten this up nice and tight so it doesn't have any metal sticking out on the thread side. Now we can put on the outside. Slides on here and then fits nicely into there. It takes a little bit of pressure to get that into place but that's good. A little washer that comes with the truck. Those are nice to keep things from slopping around. And then the pin fits in there perfectly. And then you put on, put on your wheel nut or your extender or whatever. Tighten that back up. Right. Good. Snug that up. Good to go. So they fit, there's no binding. Everything moves freely, nothing's in the way of anything. So, that's all you need to do. Drill out those two holes fiddle around a little bit and they fit. Apparently the fronts don't fit, so make sure you get the rears. Part number is here. I'll put in the description 6851A. There you go. All right, let's check these Technos out now. We're going to put this on the truck with the Max 10 system. And there's a bunch of extra stuff in here that I'm not really going to be able to use. And there's also one thing that you need for this, which is bearings. The inner side bearing on your team associated piece is the same size, but the outer bearing is larger. It's a big fat heavy duty drive shaft, so you need a bearing with a larger inside diameter but the same outside diameter. I will put the numbers on the screen because I can't remember them right now and I'll put a link in the description how to get that. So let's make sure that actually all of my calculations are correct here. So this Techno kit is awesome. Got an inner drive cup on the diff with the dog bone and then a constant velocity or CV. So I ordered up these guys. They have the same outside diameter as the OEM bearings, but a larger inside diameter. So we should be able to use that. Yeah, that slides on there. And then we got our outer bearing that we ordered, inside bearing that comes with the kit. And then this should slide right in here, just like it's, oh, no. So we had the same issue. So the pinhole for the wheel nut is too far down. To solve that, I have a couple of options. Dremel out the seat of one of these bearings, either the inside or the outside. Kind of a shitty solution because it's not gonna be perfectly flat in there. I had to do a bunch of mucking around, but this techno kit will work. It's just a pain in the ass. So these will slide onto the diff. They're a little bit snug. Just a little quick future update. 
what was catching was a little ridge on the actual diff piece. Just use a little file, just a flat file, just sand it down a little bit around where this hole is, kind of a line along there and then along each side on both sides. And then once you get that polished down just a little bit, then this drive cup will slide right on. That'll make your life easier there. The problem side is the wheel side. You have to dremel out this inside. So when this cup goes in here, the surface that that bearing sits on, ground that down a little bit so that this can sit further this direction. And that way, this hole, the pinhole at the bottom, is far enough out that you can actually get a pin into it. I did a pretty ugly job with the dremeling but it worked. Your wheel hex is gonna have to get drilled out a little bit too, because these have bigger stubs. So it comes with a little set of plastic ones, but if you're gonna be using extended ones or metal ones, you're gonna have to drill them out. And that's not super annoying, but it's just another little step. And that's a one quarter drill bit is what I used for that quarter inch drill bit. Make sure it's good quality and really sharp because it'll try to catch the drill bit and use some lube if you have it. Anyways, I dremeled out here just with a pillar type cutting tool and just tried to only cut the bottom, not the sides, but obviously I cut the hell out of the sides too. The bearing now, sits in far enough that you can get the wheel nut on. The better ways to do this, to dremel this whole thing down and get a bigger outer diameter bearing and then it'll fit snugly in there. The other thing is I'm gonna contact Techno and see if they have any pieces like this. All we need is like a millimeter or two here and then this would work for the team associated. Every, every other part fits in perfectly. Maybe they can make it, that'd be pretty cool because then there'd be a drive shaft kit made by Techno for the rival MT-10, which I'm sure would be popular. All right, let's put the CVs together. So first get some light grease, put it on the dog bone, and take this little cylinder and put that in here. Get your little cup. Maybe a little more grease in there. Not too much, it'll just collect dirt. Unless you're riding in some really wet mud or something, then cover everything with lube and grease. So I put that in there. Get one of our pins. In there. And you can just kind of wiggle that around and then it'll eventually find its way through. And then the bearing seals that in. Let's do the other one, get it out of the way. Now I'll put the cups on. There we go. Just seems like there's a little ridge it has to pop over. Screw pin thing. I'm gonna Loctite these also because it's on metal instead of plastic. Sticking out. Now we can just slide that in there. Slide that in there. And we'll put this in on this side. Plenty of room for the travel. Let's try bolting these wheels on. It's a moment of truth. Does it still have enough space to turn? Yes. All right, great. And does this one turn? Yes. Here we go. All installed, turning, no more than the usual amount of slopping around. And it would work with normal hexes, not these extenders as well. All right, I did a quick test fit with the Techno in the front here, and it fits in perfectly. Same issue with this. You'd have to dremel this out so that you can get that hole out far enough. You can see it's slightly covered there. The inside fits in fine, spins freely in there with no issues. When I compress it, there's enough room for the dog bone. It's not pushing up against the diff. So these would work in the front as well. And uh, real quick, I'll just test the uh, Traxxas in the front too, just to make sure they fit. And the Traxxas one fits too. No reason it wouldn't, but I just wanted to make sure, double check. Enough room for compression and is in the right spot because that one has the original 
axle stub and it spins freely so you could use those on the front too either one the Traxxas ones or the Techno one so that's good so my initial thoughts before testing this at all are way easier to do the simple Traxxas one obviously and way cheaper these ones require a little more messing around but hopefully they'll be even better but basically I just don't want them to break so if the Traxxas ones don't break and these don't break there's no point in going to all this trouble. So that's all set, ready to go. Both trucks are good to go. We'll do that in a separate video. little last minute update. I ended up doing one more test on this using the Traxxas drive shafts on the Max 10. I got two batteries on each truck, three batteries actually on these, about a battery and a half maybe on these guys. No problems at all with the drive shafts. I broke a bunch of other parts but didn't break any drive shafts so I think I gave them a pretty good test. Brief little breakdown of what broke. So on the Max 10, two rear arms, one RPM arm that was about a year old, and then the regular stock arm that was pretty much brand new. And the other thing it broke was one of these lower shock mounts. And what I ended up doing was using one of these pieces from the sway bar end link that fits on the shock shaft doesn't have a bushing in it so it's kind of loose but I drove it and it it was actually fine and then on the less powerful truck with the BL system didn't need to test the technos because obviously if they survive the stronger system they'll have no problem with this one broke this front piece which was not really related to the drive shafts and one of these broke also typical sort of breaking stuff ratio final verdict I gotta say the Traxxas is probably the way to go. Way cheaper, less messing around to modify them to work. And they both performed about the same. I broke a bunch of other parts, but no problems with either of the drive shafts. And I was trying kind of to break them, like throttle on when I was landing, landing on uphills, hitting those steep transitions really hard. Those are all the things that tend to break them and neither of them broke so that's all good although it does look like this one's a little bent the other side looks a little bent too so that's what i'm gonna say go for the traxxas avoid the stock team associated replacements maybe it's the same plastic they made those rear arms out of or something i don't know but that seems pretty bomb proof easy mod give it a go I got a separate video with all the testing if you want to watch that. There's a link. It'll be out next week if you're watching this right away or it's already out if you're watching this in the future. Let me know what you think. If you guys out there have had any problems with the drive shaft, if you've tried the team associated ones, I heard those were pretty weak so I didn't test them. And yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think if you try these out. Thanks for watching.